Welcome back. This is the sciatic nerve lecture. Um, and in this lecture, I will cover all the possible location for sciatic nerve block and how the sciatica present. So the sciatic nerve is a very big nerve. As you see, it starts uh, from the pelvic level and it starts from the sacral plexus, which is specifically from L4, 5, S1, S2, S3. So all of this form the sciatic nerve. And <clears throat> if you notice here, uh, even at the pelvic level, you can realize there is uh, the common peroneal fibers and the tibial fiber. So this is important because especially if you go up on the nerve, you will see sometimes uh, uh, some uh, anomalies where the nerve, instead of uh, uh, union um, in the pelvis, sometimes it union after it passes the piriformis muscle or even through the piriformis muscle. So in this uh, view here, we see the gluteus maximus muscle, we see the iliotibial band, and we see the hamstring muscles, which are the bio, uh, the biceps femoris laterally, then the semi tendinosis more medially, and semi membranosis more, sorry, uh, even more medial. And here we see the posterior femocutaneous nerve. So here we uh, remove the gluteus maximus, and you notice here how the sciatic nerve leaving the greater sciatic notch, or this is the greater sciatic notch because when, when we add the ligaments here, it forms the, the foramen. The, so the greater sciatic foramen, you see the nerve leaving underneath the pyriformis muscle. And you can appreciate the common peroneal or common fibular and the tibial uh, even at um, uh, this level. Uh, and then the, the nerve uh, travel medial to the uh, uh, spa, uh tuberosity here, uh, above the obturator internus muscle, which I have a lecture on that. So here you have the nerve running down the thigh. What I did, I removed the hamstring muscles, right? Uh, and then you will see the adductor magnus underneath that. So the nerve run underneath the hamstring muscles um, and above the adductor magnus uh, muscle. And you see at this level, there is only small branches before it branches to the common uh, peroneal and uh, tibial nerve. So here, uh, going down the thigh, so the sciatic nerve innervates the posterior thigh muscles, uh, mainly the biceps femoris, semitendinosus, semimembranosus, and uh, part of the adductor magnus. So I flipped this image just to show you so these are the hamstring muscles, and this is the sciatic nerve at the upper thigh level, and this is the adductor magnus. Um, again, here um, in this uh, image, you see the long uh, head of the biceps, so uh, biceps femoris. So we remove the biceps femoris, and then you still you see the the nerve. Here you will see the uh, semi and uh, behind it the and more uh, medial the semimembranosus. And the reason why um, um, so this is the semimembranosus just more medial and underneath the semitendinosus. Uh, here the nerve continue to descend. So if you notice here uh, this is the popliteal fossa the diamond shape, and before that you see the nerve here between, so here uh, the two muscles, this is the, the semi tendinosus, 
this is the semimembranosis. You notice the orientation. And of course, this is the biceps uh, femoris. And you see here at this level, the posterior opening of the adductor hiatus where the femoral artery and vein goes to the posterior compartment of the thigh. So as you notice the nerve underneath these muscles and here you have the fascia lata and its continuation as crotal fascia. So uh, here um, uh, I removed the biceps uh, femoris so you can see uh, uh, this is uh, the adductor magnus, this is um, the adductor hiatus. So why this is clinically important, remember in my lecture when I uh, told you about the adductor canal block, if you go more uh, distal, you have a risk of spreading the uh, local anesthetic through the adductor hiatus to the posterior compartment and potentially affecting the sciatic nerve. Now here, another uh, application, if you notice here, this is the femur bone, right? And this is the uh, medial and lateral uh, epicondyle. So there is a groove inside where the, the nerve run and the popliteal artery and uh, vein. Uh, so, so that this is here is an important uh, position when we talk about the IPAC. So the IPAC stand for infiltration between the popliteal artery and capsule of the knee. So if you notice you, here, um, you scan until you see the condyle, uh, then you go slightly above and you introduce your needle to this uh, uh, area. So uh, here is a, a picture. Uh, I'm not going to go deep on this block, but just it's relevant for this uh, lecture. So again, the two condyles, you see the, the artery, you see the nerve, and then you go in this uh, space and you infiltrate it. And the idea of this block uh, that it you selectively um, block the sensory branches of these uh, uh, tibial and common peronia that supply the posterior capsule of the knee while you spare the motor branches. Now, what's important about the sciatic nerve that once it leave the pelvis, go to the gluteal region, go in the back of the thigh, there is really no major branches until it reached close to the posterior knee where it branched to the two branches, the tibial, which is medial, and the common fibular or per peroneal uh, lateral. So above that level, you don't have major branches, all small cutaneous branches. Here, um, I'm not going to go in this lecture over the common uh, peroneal or the common tibial, or, or the tibia, there will be another lecture dedicated for them. So in terms of uh, sensory innervation, as you see the dermatome here, it, it supply uh, most of the posterior thigh, uh, most of the uh, posterior leg, except a small part here medially that's coming from the saphenous, and then uh, most of the, of the foot through its branches. Uh, more important, the osteotome, if you look here, uh, the fibula and tibia may, uh, supplied by the sciatic nerve. If you look at the ankle, it's mainly from the sciatic nerve except this uh, medial epicondyle that is coming from the saphenous nerve. And the foot is mainly from the sciatic nerve. This is important when you are talking, considering um, peripheral nerve block or placing a catheter, you know, uh, let's say you have a surgery in the ankle, it would be nice to block the popliteal sciatic and maybe the adductor canal in this case. However, if you have to choose only one catheter, only one catheter for whatever reason, let's say you have a bilateral and you want to minimize the local anesthetic, then as you see in this osteotome, 
then uh, most of the innervation from the sciatic. So you probably will pick up the popliteal sciatic. Now, how sciatic nerve pain present, or as we call sciatica? So to refresh our memory for a second here, the sciatic nerve innervate the posterior thigh muscle, right? And uh, it's sensory, uh, no direct sensory function before branching. Uh, so if we look here, again, that's the osteotome uh, of the uh, sciatic, that's the myotome here, and that's the dermatome. So when you have sciatica, you will see the patient complaining of radiating pain at the back of the thigh, the back of the leg, all the way down to the, to the ankle or to the foot. Now, um, and this is exactly the sciatica, and that can be associated with numbness, of course, and some muscle weakness, those get supplied by the sciatic nerve. Now, common causes of injury or, or sciatic nerve irritation uh, periacetabular uh, osteotomy, um, acetabular fracture surgery, hip arthroplasty, above knee amputation, pyriformis syndrome, and compression or in invasion uh, by tumor uh, anywhere from the pelvis, buttock, or posterior thigh. So how you block this nerve? Uh, Again, we are talking about the sciatic in this lecture. I'm not going to go. Uh, uh, the branches be below the knee will be different lectures. So you can block this nerve uh, at four main uh, location. The transgluteal or parasacral. Uh, that's the, the first one all the way up here. And then... Uh, you can block it also subgluteal, subgluteal, and you can block it through the anterior approach anywhere here. And then, of course, you have the popliteal sciatic. You have the popliteal sciatic. So let's go over them. The transgluteal approach, this is a nice infographic. Uh, it would be nice to save it, go back to it, just a quick summary. Now, first, how we position the patient. Um, you know, you can position the patient in this lateral position, wherever the side you need to block, it will be up, uh, and you um, feel the greater trochanter and the ischial tuberosity and start in the middle. That's one way. If you also, you can position the patient prone and do the same thing. Now, um, uh, the, just going slightly upper, slightly upper here at uh, the level of the uh, greater sciatic notch. Um, so here at this level B, and and by the way, this slide from my piriformis lecture, if you haven't watched it. So um, here you are talking about the greater sciatic notch, and and I walk you through in that lecture how you differentiate between when you place your uh, probe. Is it that the iliac crest? Is it the greater sciatic notch? Is it the ischial spine, etc.? So the greater sciatic notch is basically where you see the piriformis and you see the ischium here with the with 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 this classic concave picture. So here that's the notch, and underneath you will see the sciatic nerve. So that's one potential place to block it. And of course, if you are doing uh, pyriformis injection, that's an important place to avoid blocking the sciatic nerve. Uh, slightly going down, which is more common approach uh, to the transgluteal uh, or parasacral approach, is when you go down to the uh, ischial tuberosity. So that's the ischial tuberosity. And that's uh, almost the same level of the greater trochanter. And you go somewhere in the middle. So this is how the ischial tuberosity look like. And this is the obturator internus muscle, which I also have a lecture on that. And as you imagine, it is more lateral at this level. So this is the sciatic nerve. Uh, this is another uh, uh, clear picture here. So 
Again, in the middle, you are using a curvilinear probe. So that's the greater trochanter. That's the ischial tuporicity. And here you see the nerve. Uh, and you can appreciate also some vessels here. And underneath the nerve, you see the quadratus femoris and adductor magnus. Um, now, this is, of course, you can block the nerve here. You can place a catheter. However, um, you know, I do a lot of uh, peripheral nerve stimulator and part of my goal is to touch base on peripheral nerve stimulator and all these uh, peripheral nerve lectures. So this is, in my opinion and my experience, probably the best place to place the lead of the peripheral nerve stimulator if you are trying to target the sciatic nerve. The reason why, because one of the problem of placing lead for the sciatic nerve, uh, especially if you go down closer to the, to the posterior knee or up in the gluteus, that when the patients sit, they tend to sit on these uh, uh, muscles and push the nerve so that the patient can get a jumping sensation because the, the, all of a sudden the lead getting close to the nerve. So here, um, if you manage to squeeze the, the lead here, so you have this two boonie prominence, if you think about it, and um, kind of giving you some protection from that uh, pressure effect. You're still going to get that, but in my experience, is not as bad as, for example, when we start talking about the subgluteal approach. This is another picture, um, the same thing, uh, and you come from uh, lateral to uh, medial. So subgluteal approach, um, so the subgluteal approach, uh, again, this is uh, uh, from my lecture for the posterior cutaneous nerve, which is not our topic today. But what's important here, this is very easy. You just feel the, the head of the hamstring muscle, which is here, mainly you have the biceps femoris, as you remember, the sciatic nerve underneath that, and that's the greater trochanter. So at this level, if you place a lead, for example, there is a lot of pressure uh, effect, but you can place a catheter. But I, again, I recommend even for the catheter to go up. Now, that's another picture. Um, if you see the vessels here, so that means you are uh, lateral, so scan more uh, medial. Now, what's about the anterior approach? So the anterior approach, um, the advantage of it, basically avoid patient repositioning, especially let's say you have a fracture, um, you have an amputation, whatever reason you cannot um, position the patient in prone or lateral, then it might be a nice uh, approach just to do the femoral and the sciatic together in the uh, same position. And I will leave this table for you to go over it. So here, the anterior approach. So if you think about uh, here, you place your ultrasound probe, you see the vessels. You need to go more medial so you can go this way. Um, again, it's a, it's a steep uh, needle trajectory and challenging. I'll give you a few tips here. But it's underneath the adductor magnus. And here you see the... Um, hamstring muscles, right? So here is a picture. Uh, notice where is the, we are using the curvilinear uh, probe slightly below the femoral level. So this is a femoral bone. You localize the vessels. You go slightly medial, and then it's a, it's a kind of steep trajectory. And then you, you pop through the adductor uh, magnus muscle, and you see the sciatic nerve underneath that. Here is another um, image, and um, it's once you just manage how to handle the needle and adjust uh, rocking the, the, the probe, then you should be good. Um, here uh, is another uh, uh, picture as well, uh, more medial and with a different angulation of the probe, uh, but also it's very important to scan and take your time because also you have the profunda uh, femoris. You don't want to hit that while you are going. 
So you, you really need to insert your uh, needle uh, medial and going uh, uh, this way. Um, this is a longitudinal view of the nerve. And let's uh, uh, wrap up with the popliteal approach. So the popliteal approach is probably the most common thing nowadays. Again, this is a nice infographic that you can save. So positioning, um, you can position the patient uh, this way and put your ultrasound probe this way, or you can position the patient prone and come this way. Now, it's a personal preference. However, if you are doing a peripheral nerve stimulator, uh, definitely go with this. That's uh, you, you're going to spend a lot of time there and you don't want the, your patient in this position or you uh, holding the probe in this position. When, when it comes to how you place your needle, you can place your needle slightly outside or closer to the probe, but that will affect your uh, angle of the needle. So here, this is um, a very straightforward, um, you see here, on the lateral side, you see the common peroneal, and that's the uh, the biceps femoris muscle. Here you see the tibial medially, and you see the semi uh, tendinosus, and underneath that the semi membranosus, and of course you notice the the visuals. Um, here, as you see, uh, scanning up and down, it's a very important habit to do that between A to D. So A uh, very close to the to the posterior knee, you will see them uh, separated. And remember, not every patient is the same, so you really have to scan up and down. The more you scan um, up, they get closer to each other, they get closer to each other until they become one nerve, but you still can appreciate the fascicles between them. So let's say you are doing um, a catheter, um, so you probably want to drop the catheter in between them, that's that's a good idea. You say you are doing a block, so make sure you uh, spread the medication all over and between these nerves. And then I tried in the past doing a peripheral nerve simulator here. As I said, that pressure effect here uh, was not satisfactory for the patient, but again, it's, it's not contraindication and it's a provider preference. That's another image here spreading the local all around the nerves between the nerves and here i uh, will leave these tables for you again if you are studying for your board exam uh, the board still sometimes like to ask this question about okay you place your needle here you get this contraction versus this contraction how you adjust your needle however this is mainly applicable for the landmark um, technique, whether you are doing gluteal approach, posterior popliteal approach, or lateral popliteal approach. Thank you for your watching, and I hope um, you find this helpful.